How often we suffer persecution and suffer misunderstanding with people that are around us, sometimes seemingly without any cause. Some would even lie or give half-truths, spread falsities about us, seemingly to try to destroy us. Hatred and lying seem to go hand in hand, don't they? Yet I am so in love with the word of God, which is absolute truth. It shows that every man is corrupt to the core and that our only hope is in the Lord and his word in the first place. The, the love of, of God is what ministers to our hearts and the word of God ministers to our hearts. God will keep us connected to his truth as we submit to him. God's word is awesome. A great wealth and by his spirit, his word anchors us into reality <laughs> in a world that is dark and deceitful. That's what we will see today, I believe, in our daily walk through the Psalm, Psalm 119, 161 through 168. Verse 161 says, princes, or you could put in their leaders, have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I rejoice at your word as one that finds great spoil, great riches, if you will. A wealthy man is one that has hidden God's word in his heart and meditates upon it day and night. I like what the psalmist said earlier on in chapter one, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. That's the prosperity of one that has found, found that God's word is, is wealth, <laughs> is what we need. We notice that princes are, are have persecuted me without a cause. Uh, you know, leadership, we see that today. Such a mark of, of us being in the end times. We see leadership falling apart here in this great country of ours, America. And the leadership has really gone south, if you will. They're on that bandwagon of wickedness. Uh, the whole woke agenda, the whole agenda bringing forth, calling wicked things good and, and good things wicked and and calling people that have, hold to a biblical worldview as those that have uh, perpetuated hate crimes or desire to bring hate towards others. And, and of course, none of that's true. It, it, a true born-again Christian, one that loves the word of God, one that rejoices in Jesus, is also one that loves everybody, including sinners. I mean, we love those that are doing stupid things that will destroy their lives, and we want to call them out. And it's not because we're better than they are. No, we're sinners just like they are. It's it, The only thing is, is we found hope in Jesus Christ and his living word. God's word, again, is that that foundation, that boundary that keeps us from, from destroying ourselves. That's why God gave us his word. And he gave us Jesus Christ because God knew that we couldn't even keep his word without being born again, be, having our sins forgiven, and being empowered with the Holy Spirit. God's done it all. God's taken care of everything for us in that way. So, you know, again, I rejoice at your word as one that finds the great spoil. The greatest riches that we have as Christians is the Bible and Jesus Christ, the living word, and his Holy Spirit that dwells within us and empowers us. And it's so wonderful to know that. Every man, every one of us, thus works out our own salvation in fear and trembling, for it is God that works in us to will and do his good pleasure. That's why a person needs to be born again. <laughs> Can't do it in the, in, the, in the strength of the flesh. You have to do it in the power of the Spirit, and that's a surrendered life unto Jesus Christ. I hope that's where you are today. Surrendered unto him, listening, looking to him, looking to him and, 
And again, studying and meditating on his word so you understand his heart and who he is. God's word from cover to cover is, you know, that he loves us. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Simple song, but so true. Well, verse 163 says, I hate and abhor lying, but your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. So in other words, all day long, I, I'm praising you for your, for your word, for your righteous judgments. Your word is so true. It's so clear, clean, right perfect. I need that, Lord, so much in a world that I'm filled with ambiguity and strife and delusion and compromise and everything else. And I've, I've come to hate lying, and, and everyone hates lying, quite frankly. Who wants to be lied to? Who wants to be deceived? Nobody does. We love the truth. We, we long for the truth. That's why we love the law. We love the Word of God that, that gives us the outline of absolute truth. It is absolute truth, the word of God. And so we, we do hate lying, and, and yet we, we love his law, we love his truth. Great peace, verse 165, have they which love your law. <laughs> Amen to that. And nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hoped for your salvation and done your commandments. A great peace. Those that love the truth, love the word of God, love the Bible, are people that also love people. Because if we're submitted to the word of God, we know that we're to love our neighbors as ourselves. And then Jesus would even take it a step further in the body of Christ and that we're to love one another as Christ has loved us so that the world would know that we're his disciples. And of course, how did Christ love us? Well, he laid down his life. He put all of us first before himself and died in our place. And that's what we're called to do as a Christian. And if you're living, putting other people first, you're going to live at peace. You're always going to be a peacemaker, always seeking to have peace with every man. And, and of course, we're not going to like everything that people do. We're not going to, certainly, we, we still hate uh, lies and deceit, but we're able to handle that through prayer. And through servant, servicehood, ser, or servanthood, and, 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 and so forth. So, great peace have I have, they that which love your law, and nothing shall offend them. You know, part of the, what's it true in the word of God is that we have died to ourselves, and we live unto Christ. So, how do you offend a dead person? <laughs> We're alive in the spirit, but dead to ourselves, at least that's how we're supposed to live, right? And I, I have hope for your salvation and done your commandments. Now, faith of this is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things that are seen are not made by the things which do appear. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, for they that come to God must believe that he is, that God exists, and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's where the salvation is. I seek the Lord diligently in faith, patiently waiting on him. And he's going to save me. He has saved me. And of course, our ultimate faith is on Jesus Christ, God's son who came to die for us in our place, rose again from the dead three days later, and ever lives in heaven, making intercession for us, and at the same time lives within us. He's God. He can do that. He can be at many places at one time. <laughs> and, and don't we love that? I, lo I have hope for your salvation and done your commandments. My soul, verse 167, has kept your testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept your precepts and your testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Don't you just appreciate that so much. All my ways are before the Lord. He knows everything. He knows my steps. He knows what I'm going to step tomorrow. He knows what's in my heart. He knows what I'm thinking. And yet, in his awesome love, he loves me anyways. And as we surrender and submit to him, he's able then to work in us to both will and do his good pleasure. 
It's amazing. It's wonderful to know Jesus and to be known by Jesus. God bless you as you serve and worship Jesus Christ today. In his name we pray. Amen.